Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Breaking Play, a series where I break down games of Guild Ball and look for lessons to improve future play. For this episode, Vincent Kirkov, one of my WTC teammates and creator of the excellent Run the Length channel that inspired my own, invited me to do a crossover collaboration featuring two perspectives on the same game. This game features his farmers against my hunters and was recorded in my living room here in Chicago. Be sure to check out his new video as well for insights from the farmer's perspective. You'll find a link in the description below in case you're not already subscribed to his channel. One quick plug before we get to the action. The Strictly the Worst Boys and I and the rest of the Chicago meta are hosting the inaugural Second Wind Tournament right here in the Second Windy City, December 15th and 16th at Alarmist Brewing. We're hoping to make this an annual event, and this year's will also be one of the first large events of Season 4. It's going to be a great opportunity to test your takes against players from all across the U.S. and maybe even Canada too. The first 32 registrants get some special swag, and less than 10 of those tickets remain. Check out Longshanks Event 1344 for tickets, and contact any of us for more information. Alright, let's get to the game. We deal and select game plan cards, and I end up with Seize the Initiative, Grudge Match, Full Back, Keep Your Chin Up, and Wing Backs. Vince takes Lone Striker, Get Back In There, Dig Deep, Hunker Down, and the Offside Trap. I don't know this while we are playing, but after Lone Striker, all of Vince's cards have lower initiative values than my lowest cards. This should put the initiative distinctly in my favor, so let's see how the game plays out. We roll off and Vince wins, choosing to receive. We reveal Grange and Peck versus Theron and Fahad, then proceed with the draft. The draft sequence goes Tater, Hearn, Millstone, Minerva, Fallow, Zerola, Harrow, and finally Veteran Minx. Fairly standard lineups for both captains. We've both got three 2-inch reach models which should keep that advantage balanced. His team is well equipped to tie me up in a scrum with Grange's double crowd out, Fallow is forcing me to attack her, and Millstone and Peck's condition sinking. My team has an advantage in speed and mobility with Minx, Zerola, and Hearn, and I'm hoping to control Fallow, Grange, or Tater with Theron to allow the rest of my team to do their work. Minerva also ought to help get through their health pools and keep my own models alive a bit longer if we do get locked down. I'm not sure this is a better plan than skewing even further into a fast hit and run lineup. Rather than trying to beat the farmers at their own game, it may very well be a smarter plan to do our best to shift the game to a place they aren't well equipped to play. In any case, the hunters have a lot of flexibility now with their minor guild models, and I decided to try out how well Minerva could power us through a prolonged fight. We line up and Theron kicks fairly centrally, putting the ball on the other side of an obstruction from Harrow. Moving to allocation, Vince puts three on Harrow, four on Grange, and one each on Fallow, Tater, Millstone, and Peck. I then give five to Theron, one to Minx, two each to Minerva, Hearn, and Zerola. This is a fairly common turn one setup with Theron kicking, giving the team a good bit of flexibility. Five lets Theron sunstrike himself and throw two character plays, then blessing himself for a third, netting two momentum. Zerola has two to minute offering someone, likely Theron, but potentially Minx or Minerva. Later in the game, she'll usually receive, uh, just receive a blessing to do that, but on turn one, I can afford the influence and won't necessarily have the momentum when I want it. Hearn's two lets him teleport up into Theron's forest and throw a skewered without spinning momentum if needed and also gives him the flexibility to charge or make a couple attacks and a blessing for the skewer if the opportunity or situation arises. It just gives him a lot of flexibility, and most of the time I don't think he needs a third influence this turn. With one, Minx has the flexibility to sprint up and engage a model that comes too far forward, setting up marked for death with her own blessing, or simply to get into a good position for the following turn. Minerva can use her two to buy a Harrier, or follow up on Minx's setup to charge and then make a second attack, setting up Hearn to clean up at the end of the turn. So Vince activates Harrow first to retrieve the ball, but forgets to place his harvest marker at the start of activation for being near Grange. He considers tooling up Grange, then decides to tool up Fallow instead. So he sprints to get the ball, ending up in 4 of Fallow, tools her up, and passes 8 inches over to Millstone thanks to Grange's passing aura. Since Grange wasn't tooled up, I start off with Zerola, using Minute Offering to jog Theron up to 8 inches of Grange in cover. This forces Grange to activate immediately before Theron pins him and runs away. 
It could still go badly as Grange could come knock Theron down and hold him here. But I'm not sh and I'm not sure it's the correct move. Vince does indeed go with Grange right away, dropping a harvest marker near Fallow and sprinting up to engage Theron. He then makes two attacks, knocking Theron down momentously, and then getting a poor roll dealing just one damage. With his final influence, he buys constitution on himself. This leaves Theron at 17 health. Here I thought about trying to send Minx up, but she'd have to sprint to engage, and with only one influence that leaves her unable to make an attack to generate momentum. It's possible it's better to give her two and only put one on Minerva when I'm allocating for this turn one, but that cuts the option of buying a Harrier. Anyway, Hearn and Minerva were both well out of range of Grange, since there was no ready way to generate a momentum to stand Theron for his activation. I opted to just go with him and use Sunstrike to generate some. I start by placing his forest within four inches of Hearn, being sure not to block Minx or Minerva's path to Grange, and then sacrifice his move to stand. He Sunstrikes himself and hits Grange with Snipe, dealing only one damage due to Constitution and snaring Grange. He then attempts to pin Fallow, who is the only remaining really meaningful activation for the farmers, but misses. If that pin had hit, there's a fair chance Hearn could have come up and pushed Grange into a place to block Fallow's path, effectively ending Vince's remaining influence for the turn. Remember that thanks to Make Hay, that one influence she's holding is actually likely to be 5 when she activates. I choose not to use the Blessing, making sure to save the momentum for Minx. Possibly I should have just sniped Grange one more uh, time for one more damage, as only Snake Eyes would miss and not refund that momentum. This leaves Grange at 25 health. Millstone is up next, jogging up into range to take conditions from Grange, and passes to Tater. The pass fails, but it scatters to Tater, and Millstone places her harvest marker behind her, near Fallow. Minx then spritz up to engage Grange, spends momentum to blessing herself and put up Mark for Death, and drops a Jawbone Trap in front of Grange. This puts Minerva now in range of Grange on her discounted charge. Tater goes next, sprinting up and making sure to leave a gap for Fallow between him and Grange, and then passes to Fallow and dodges her forward. Unfortunately, by keeping that gap, though neither of us notices at the time, he moves up to more than two inches from the nearest harvest marker. Minerva now takes her chance to join the scrum before Fallow can activate and spends one to charge Grange per marked for death. Grange counters and is effectively sturdy thanks to Millstone's aura. I place Minerva within six of Tater, completely forgetting about his counter charge. Vince checks and realizes his, his positioning error. I got a huge break here. Minerva rolls her attack from the charge, only needing twos because it's snared. She wraps to the third column and makes, takes the momentous knockdown on two twice to prevent his counter attack. She spends her remaining influence to attack once more, rolling seven dice because of the knockdown, but fails to wrap and just puts down a momentous harrier, hitting Grange and Tater, and covering where I uh, expect Fallow to end up. Peck then walks up and puts Kaki on Millstone. I next jog Fahad up into cover, ensuring I will get to end the turn with Hearn's activation. Fallow is the final move for the turn for the farmers. She uses Make Hay to pick up four influence, then jogs up to Theron, dropping the ball to Tater on the way. Theron counters her first attack, and she selects her non-momentous knockdown on two. She then hits a momentous 3 thanks to tooled up, and spends 2 momentum to clear Grange's conditions, picking up another die for her remaining attacks. The next 3 attacks each also result in momentous 3 damage, leaving Theron at just 5 health. Missing that pin hurt, and this attempt to go toe to toe in the center feels on the brink of going very wrong. Hearn finishes the turn by teleport to the forest, such that he's engaging Fallow, and in cover of the central obstruction. He then attacks her, taking Momentous 3 on both attacks, and bringing her down to 13 health. The turn ends with me up, 4 momentum to 3. I held off spending a momentum on Blessing to skewer her for 4 more damage in order to keep my single momentum lead, as it's critical I go first to avoid immediately losing Theron. That said, I take a huge risk and play Grudge Match, and I think this is an interesting decision to break down. Killing Fallow is key to the fight, as she is both the biggest output and biggest control piece in the scrum, preventing me from attacking any choicer targets and forcing me to take the Grange double crowd out. I basically have to kill her before I can work on Grange, who is the next most important target to take down. I think about playing Seize the Initiative, which would guarantee I go first, but I want Fallow to stay right where she is so Theron can stand up and put 6 influence into her, and the board state feels like Vince would get more out of the dodges than I would, especially with me dodging first. 
With Grudge Match, I'm also guaranteed to go first unless Vince has and plays Lone Striker. And the two extra dice on Fallow counter Grange's double crowd out to make it so Theron actually has some respectable odds to get the takeout. However, if Vince plays Lone Striker and wins the roll off, it's a huge disaster. Grange can go first, kill Theron. And I suspect put up Constitution on Fallow and likely takes firm control of the fight from there, as the rest of my team won't have the output to take her down. So how likely is Theron to get the takeout with singled out exactly? Going back up to, ta to base tax 6, he's 89% to hit his momentous push, pushing her through the jawbone trap and into Minerva's melee. With the extra die, he's then 77% to do momentous 2 and snared, or 99% to just get the 1 damage and snare. If he does hit that 2 damage, he's, he's then 93.5% to drop her to 2 health in his remaining attacks without bonus timing. If only the 1, that's still 82.7%. That then lets him use a Blessing to deal the final 2 damage, which is 89% if he bonus times back to 2 dice. And there are some smaller odds he gets her down without even needing the Blessing as well, around 66 or 46%, depending on that first damage being 1 or 2. Now I'm trying to work with using Orange's Excellent Damage Calculator to pull these numbers, but unfortunately the fact that Theron reduces their defense the first time he does damage is a hiccup I don't know how to overcome to get a full likelihood on the takeout. He's something like 57% to take her out on the 2 damage route with a blessing, 64.8% for the initial 1 damage route, but I don't know what his overall odds of getting the takeout are. A little more than 65%, but I don't know how much. And better of course with bonus timing along the way, as all his damage is momentous, apart from the 4 on top. With 2 less dice though, it's just not going to happen. So the question is, is this worth the risk? What should I expect to happen if I play Seize the Initiative to fully guarantee first activation? Is there a favorite position I can aim for with my dodge? Back to the game at hand, Vince does indeed play Lone Striker, and my turn hangs on this die roll. Luckily I narrowly win the roll 2 to 1, and play singled out on Fallow. Vince places his on Minerva, and we move to allocation. Before we allocate, Harrow's aura heals Grange back to full and Fallow up to 15. I then give 13, and then I give 3 to Hearn, 2 to Minerva, and 6 to Theron. Down 1 influence thanks to my game plan card. Vince puts 5 on Grange, 4 on Tater, and 1 on Harrow. Theron obviously begins the turn, placing his forest to provide cover to himself, Minx, and Minerva. He forfeits his, his move to stand and attacks Fallow, who counters. This counter was probably a mistake as she is only attack 3 at this point in the turn. Theron's first attack takes the momentous push on 2 to bring her into base, triggering the jawbone trap for 2 damage and putting her into Minerva's melee. I do this to prevent her push on 1 from pushing me out, though she was only 25% to hit it. Luckily as we both missed beforehand, the extra crowd out from Minerva brings her down to a single die so she can't actually get any results on the counter thanks to Theron's armor. His next attack does momentous 3 damage and snared, and Vince chooses not to take the condition with Millstone, as Theron will just snare her again on the next attack. His third attack does momentous 2, and would have done the same even if Millstone had taken the initial snare. Then his fourth attack only gets 1 momentous damage. He bonus times the next attack, since that 1 puts him in danger of failing, and gets momentous 2. Bonus times his sixth attack as well, getting up to the momentous 3 again, leaving her at 2 health. He then blessing himself and bonus times a snipe and succeeds, doing the final 2 damage and taking her out. This triggers Minerva's nocturnal hunting, healing Theron for 4, and he then spends a, mo a momentum to heal himself as well, pulling him up from 5 to 13 health and bringing the score to 2 to 0 for the hunters. We discussed that that activation may have just decided the game, but I think it only decided that I'm still in the game rather than falling into a space I'd have a hard time recovering from. Anyway, Grange activates next to weather this turn and uses his legendary, putting up a sturdy aura and placing two harvest markers, plus his normal one. He then attacks Minerva, knocking her down momentously. Second attack whiffs on Minx, but his third knocks her down as well. His final attack gets momentous honest labor off of Minerva, and then his remaining influence puts constitution on himself. Tater should now be well set up to do some work at least. 
Minx goes next, setting up my team as well. She sacrifices her move to stand and places a jawbone trap in front of Grange, where Tater will have to eat it to engage Theron, then uses Blessing on herself for Marked for Death. I considered putting the Blessing onto Zerola, but she was outside of 6 inches, and then trying to put it on Hearn so that he could put his own on Zerola, uh, but she did not have line of sight to see Hearn. In the end, I probably should have just left the momentum and not put Marked for Death up at all. Harrow then drops a Harvest Marker, tools up Tater, and jogs to clear the Jawbone Trap, engaging both Minx and Minerva. This puts Harrow at 17 health. Minerva is up next, sacrificing her move to stand. She attacks Grange on flat tack between Harrow and Minx, and Grange counters. She puts down a momentous Harrier, covering both Harrow and Grange, and where Tater will at least have to be careful where he stands to engage Theron. Grange's counter gets a double push, pushing Minerva out of engagement, and her second influence is wasted. Tater is up next and starts by dropping the ball to Millstone. He then charges Theron, who uses defensive stance. Tater positions to engage Minx as well, which puts Grange and Harrow both in his melee zone, and himself in the Harrier. He takes momentous 4 damage, thanks to Honest Labor and Tooled Up, on the charge, which also deals 3 sweeping charge damage to each of Theron, Minx, Harrow, and Grange. His second attack does momentous 3, followed by 0 hits on his final attack. This is another huge break, as he only needed a single success for the takeout and has no remaining influence for the turn. At the end of the activation, Harrow is on 14 health, Grange 23, Minx 9, and Theron miraculously hanging on on 3 health. I follow up with Hearn's activation and jog to engage Tater. His first attack takes momentous 3 thanks to the Harrier, third attack does momentous 4, and his final attack spikes to the top for a momentous skewered, dealing 4 damage and snared, which Millstone takes. I had good dice on this activation, bringing Tater down to 5 health, and Hearn spends 1 momentum to bless Zerola. Millstone then drops the ball to Peck, spends a momentum to clear her snare, and jogs up behind Grange and Harrow. She drops her Harvest Marker behind Tater, and spends 2 momentum to heal him back up to 9. Zrola goes, spends her blessing to Midnight Offering Hearn to jog away from the obstruction, still engaging Tater, hoping to possibly leave a spot for Fahad to charge Tater. She then jogs laterally to a more central position behind the scrum. Peck takes the final Farmer's activation to just jog up behind Millstone. Fahad then ends the turn. I actually measure it out, he doesn't have a spot to charge within one of Tater. So he just charges up the pitch to set up for a charge next turn. The hunters lead the farmers 3 momentum to 1 at the end of the turn. Plus 2 momentum, and with Lone Striker and Grudge Match already played, and Seize in my hand, I'm essentially free to play any of my 4 initiative cards, with only the other 6 as a possible tie. I play Keep Your Chin Up, as I'm going to need all the healing I can get to hold on to this slight advantage that Vince's bad dice have granted me. Vince plays Get Back In There, which will allow Fallow to get back involved quickly, and try to recover control of the fight. I didn't realize at the time that this was also his highest remaining card. I win the initiative and choose to go first. Harold's heal aura brings himself to 16, Tater to 11, and Grange to 25. We move to allocation and I again put 3 on Minerva, 3 on Hearn, and 6 on Theron. I think they will all do more work than Minx here, and I want to spend as much in each single activation as I can. Minx will be fine just adding a crowd out and a trap. Fallow jogs back on next to goal at 10 health, and Vince picks up 4 Harvest Markers for influence. He allocates 6 to Grange, 3 to Millstone, 2 to Tater, and 1 each to Harrow, Fallow, and Peck, forgetting to allocate 1 influence. Theron starts the turn again and places his forest, putting Hearn, Minerva, and Minx all in cover. Before anything else, he uses the free common mate for my game plan card to heal Minx back to full. This is actually an important thing to note, and a good habit to get into if you are playing Minerva. This card makes your first come on mate free, so if you don't spend the free one from the card before securing a takeout and triggering nocturnal hunting, then you'll only get one free come on mate instead of two. With that resolved, he attacks Tater, and Vince opts not to counter. His first attack does just momentous one, and Millstone sinks the snare. Second attack does momentous one again, this time sticking the snare on Tater. I bonus time the third attack and do momentous 2. Fourth attack does momentous 2 again with no bonus time. I bonus time the fifth attack, reaching momentous 3 and dropping Tater to 2 health. 
His final attack hits Momentus 3 again, taking Tater out. This triggers Minerva's heal, which along with the momentum to heal himself, brings Theron up 8 health once again, leaving him on 11. The score is now 4-0 for the Hunters. Minerva, our game plan cards, and a couple of bad dice attacks from the farmers are collaborating to keep me in this fight that I probably ought to be losing. He then spends one momentum to put a blessing onto Minerva, and we're on to the farmer's activation. Continuing the repetition of turn two, Grange activates next. His first attack nets a momentous knockdown on Minx, followed by a momentous knockdown on Theron. He then jogs up into the forest, engaging Minerva and Hearn. He buys an attack on Minerva, getting another momentous knockdown, and then whiffs an attack on Hearn. With his last two influence, he puts up Honest Labor and Constitution on himself, then places a harvest marker behind him next to the other marker remaining from the prior turn. Fahad goes next, jumps on the chance to destroy those two harvest markers, and hit a snared target, and declares a charge on Millstone, who uses defensive stance. He destroys those two harvest markers on the way in, and ends up engaged by Grange and Harrow outside of Peck, so only rolling four dice. I'm greedily hoping to dodge in and provide an extra crowd out or gang up on Grange, but just net a single result for non-momentous 2 damage thanks to Snared. This puts Millstone on 15 health. Peck jogs up to Fahad and attacks with a bonus time. The Rooster wraps and does momentous 2 twice thanks to Honest Labor, dropping Fahad to 2 health. This may not have been the best positioning on my part, but I think I'm happy to take the exchange for all of his harvest markers. Still, I should have stayed out of Grange and Harrow on my charge. Minx activates next, simply sacrificing her move to stand and dropping a jawbone marker between Grange and Harrow. She's thus engaging both Grange and Harrow once again. Harrow activates, forgets his free harvest marker, immediately buying an attack on Fahad. He gets two damage and sow the seeds thanks to Honest Labor, which takes out Fahad. He places the harvest marker behind Millstone, then jogs to engage Theron, taking two damage from the jawbone trap. He then heals himself back up to 18 health, the score is now 4-1 to one for the Hunters. Minerva spends a momentum to stand and declares an attack on Grange, who counters. She takes a momentous I Spy on Grange. He then rolls his counterattack, bonus timing back up to 4 dice. After rolling, he recalls I had spent momentum instead of my movement to stand, and regrets the bonus time, since a push out does not end her activation. He takes a knockdown, and she sacrifices her movement to stand back up, and spends the blessing to put down a harrier touching all four of Grange, Harrow, Millstone, and Peck. Her second attack does Momentous 3, and her final attack wraps to the 1, doing Momentous 3 and non-Momentous 1. This leaves Grange on 18 health. Millstone goes next, spends momentum to clear her conditions. She then jogs up to Theron, engaged by Hearn. In her eagerness to put work into Theron, she forgets to drop her Harvest Marker at the top of her activation. This means she can't place it in range for Fallow to use it for make hay, meaning Fallow won't be getting any work done this turn. Millstone puts her attacks into Theron thanks to Honest Labor doing Momentous 3, Momentous 3, and with a bonus time on the final attack, Momentous 4, leaving Theron on just one health. The farmers are now out of, un are now out of usable influence, and Theron will once again miraculously survive a turn. Millstone forgets her Harvest Marker entirely at the end of her activation. Hearn has my second to last activation with my only remaining influence, and attacks Grange to set him up for a takeout top of next turn. His first attack does Momentous 2, followed by a Momentous Skewered for 3 damage, with Millstone sinking the Snared, and finally another Momentous 2. This leaves Grange on 11 health, and Hearn spends 1 momentum to put a Blessing on Zerola. Fallow takes the final activation for the farmers, sprinting up to engage Theron. Missing that harvest marker is a big loss, as she easily does the last damage to take him out otherwise. Zerola ends the turn, jogging to get line of sight on Grange, and using Blessing to chain bullet him, dealing 2 damage and snared. This drops him to 9 health. The turn ends with the hunters again, with a small momentum lead, 7 to 5. I choose to play my other 4 card wingbacks, saving fullback and seize. Vince plays Hunker down as he's only got two ones and a two remaining, and I win the initiative, choosing to go first. Harrow's aura brings Grange back to 11, Millstone up full on 17, Fallow to 12, and himself back to full as well. I jock Fahad back on near the forest at 3 health, and allocate 3 to Minerva and Hearn again, 
four to Minx, and two to Zerola. I can't start off with a fully loaded Theron again, as a single counterattack almost certainly kills him. Tater jogs back on next to the goal on eight health, and Vince allocates just two to Grange, three to Millstone, and two each to Peck, Tater, and Harrow, and one to Fallow. Since Grange was left below his icy sponge, snared and doubly ganged up on, this is a perfect turn to start off with Minerva. She buys her first attack on Grange, and he considers countering, but realizes neither a push or knockdown matters, as she hasn't moved or healed yet. Rolling seven dice on a 2-0, she wraps to the first column, taking Momentous 4, thanks to easy pickings, and Momentous Harrier, getting Grange, Harrow, Millstone, and Fallow all on the Harrier. Vince then realizes he should have countered after all, because my dealing damage to him triggers Fallow's jog. She can't get to me now, because of the scrum, but if he reached the double push, then she might have. He'd need four fours on the counter, which is a long shot, but worth a try at this point in the game, especially on hunker down turn. With a double crowd out, it's normally just, it would normally be just a 6% chance, but the two extra dice from hunker down brings that back up to a reasonable desperation 34%. She buys a second attack, and this time he does counter. I have bonus time, and she wraps to the first column again, this time taking Momentous 5 and non Momentous 3, thanks to the Harrier and Easy Pickings, which is enough for the takeout. This triggers Nocturnal Hunting, healing Theron back up to 5. She then jogs to engage Millstone and makes her final attack, momentously knocking her down. The score is now 6-1 to one for the Hunters. Peck goes first for the Farmers, dropping the ball and charging Theron, who defensive stances. The Rooster wraps, taking Momentous 1 twice, and leaving Theron on 3 health. He then spends those 2 momentum to clear conditions for Millstone, priming her to sink conditions for the rest of the team again. Given a reprieve with Theron surviving another activation, I go ahead and activate him but next before I lose that activation. He places his forest behind the farmers, but within 4 inches of Hearn. He then sacrifices his move to stand and spends 2 momentum to blessing himself and bonus time a pinned at Fallow. He hits, dealing 2 damage and snared, and Millstone once again takes the snared. He then spends one more moment momentum to heal, bringing himself up to 7 health. Fallow is down to 10. Hera goes next, doing more setup and building toward Fallow's activation. He doesn't get a free harvest marker this turn since Grange is taken out, and starts off with an attack on Theron. He gets 1 damage, sow the seeds, bringing Theron to 6 health and placing a harvest marker in the forest behind himself near Fallow. He then jogs back toward the forest to max reach for Minx and tools up Fallow. I think Vince missed the sneaky go run I had set up with Hearn, and I jump on it now before that loose ball gets picked up. Hearn teleports to Theron's forest, leapfrogging the scrum and engaging Harrow, and buys an attack on Harrow. I'm on zero mom momentum, so I need to get one or two off of these attacks. I really only need a single three on five dice for momentous singled out, and then the push on 2 or momentous double push on 3 to disengage, and I can jog up to tap in range, picking up the ball on the way. Luckily, Hearn spikes a bit on the first attack and gets the momentous double push right away, pushing Harrow away and into Theron's melee. This means he can use his second influence to sprint and destroy two harvest markers on his way to taking the shot. His last influence successfully puts in the goal, and I keep the momentum. The score is now 10 to 1 for the Hunters. Nature's Blessing is a powerful trait, that lets you activate from unexpected angles, sometimes even against experienced opponents. Placing my forest behind the lions instead of using it to give my team cover as I had done the prior turns might have been a tell toward my plan, but I got fortunate that Vince's focus was on turning the scrum he shouldn't have been losing back around, and that left this other angle open. Vince kicks the ball out pretty short in front of the goal, and it scatters just a few inches in front of Tater. He then activates Millstone, who drops a harvest marker behind Fallow, and jogs around Theron staying in cover and engaging Minerva. She attacks Theron, taking Momentous 1, followed by Momentous 2, and another Momentous 1, leaving him on 2 health. She then spends 1 momentum to clear her snared. I then activate Minx, jogging her to engage Millstone and attack. Her first attack does a Momentous dodge, and her second does Momentous 2 damage, putting Millstone on 15 health. This triggers between a rock, and Vince jogs Fallow up to base contact with Theron into Minx's melee. She spends her third attack on Fallow, as required, and takes a momentous dodge out of engaging her. Her final attack against Millstone nets a momentous marked for death. 
She then spends a momentum to put Blessing on Zerola and drops a jawbone trap between her and Theron near both Millstone and Harrow. I didn't see this during the game, but it looks like Minx's activation might have actually been able to get another goal to end the game right here. She could have taken three attacks at Harrow, uh, only needing a single result on a 3-0 to get a momentous dodge. Three inches of dodge will get her disengaged from him and probably in range of jogging over that obstruction to pick up the ball in range of kicking in the goal. Fallow uses Make Hay, picking up one marker for two influence. She then attacks Theron, rolling really poorly, but one success is enough to deal Momentus 2 and finally take him out. She's now free from pin and can jog wherever she likes, and she jogs up to engage Minerva and Minx, taking two from the jawbone trap on the way. She then attacks Minerva twice, doing Momentus 3 and Momentus 2, dropping her to 10 health. She finally spends one momentum to heal herself back up to 14. The score is now 10 to 3 for the Hunters. Cirilla next spends Blessing to throw a Chain Bullows at Fallow with a bonus time. She hits, doing 2 to Fallow, and once again snaring Millstone. Zerilla then spends 1 influence to charge Fallow, thanks to Marked for Death. Fallow Death Stances, but Zerilla wraps to the second column anyway, selecting non-momentous 2 damage from the top and a momentous push on the wrap. She attacks once more, getting the full book and taking 2 more non-momentous damage. This leaves Fallow at 8 health, and is one of the very few times I have used Zerilla's playbook. Tater ends the turn for the farmers with a charge on Hearn, picking up the ball on the way. His charge reaches the momentous mowdown on 3, knocking Hearn down. Fahad then takes the final activation, using Shadowlike for my game plan card, and charging Fallow. She defensive stances up to 5 defense, and he just reaches the second column for a momentous 1 damage and a dodge back out of engagement. This drops her to 7 health, and ends the turn with a 1 momentum lead for the Hunters once again, 5 to 4. Going into turn 5, I just need to deal those last 7, soon to be 9, points to Fallow to end the game. I take fullback. This might let Theron charge for free if Minx sets it up, but primarily once again I don't want Fallow to dodge out from C's. I like her being right where she is with some gang ups. Vince takes a dig deep for an extra influence, and I win the initiative. I like to go first and jog back on, jog Theron back on next to the goal at 9 health. Harrow heals Tater up to 10, Fallow to 9, and Millstone back to a full 17. I allocate 4 to Minx, and 3 each to Minerva, Theron, and Hearn. Theron is too far out to reach Fallow, so it's on Minerva to start things off again this time. Vince jogs Grange back on next to his goal on 13 health, then allocates 3 to him and Millstone, 4 to Tater, and one to Harrow. Minerva starts us off attacking Fallow, rolling six dice, minus one for a crowd out, plus two gang ups. Her first attack does momentous three from easy pickings. Her second attack only gets one success, so she takes non-momentous two. The top of her book on her final attack takes Fallow out for the win, so I have bonus time on the long shot, getting three hits for another momentous three, leaving Fallow on one health. Tater starts off for the farmers and charges Minx, taking a momentous 2 and triggering sweeping charge due to an additional 3 damage to both her and Fahad, taking Fahad out. He then spends 2 momentum to heal Fallow and attacks once again, getting another momentous 1 on Minx. He goes for his best long shot to rescue Fallow and spends his final influence to pass to her, with a bonus time back to 3 dice, hitting the 6 he needs and dodging her out away from Minx. He then spends 1 momentum to heal himself. Minx is now down to 6 health, Fallow's back up to 5, and Tater up to 14. The score is 10 to 4 for the Hunters. Unfortunately, Vince missed seeing the influence on Hearn, and he gets to strike from a surprise angle again. The spot Fallow dodged to is within jog range of him, and the farmers have no momentum to counter. With 3 attacks and a possible blessing for Skewered, he's got pretty good odds to end the game, despite her being in cover. He spends 1 momentum to clear knockdown, then jogs to engage her. His first attack does Momentous 2, followed by another Momentous 2, and finally a non-Momentous 1 for the final point of damage, taking her out and bringing the final score to 12-4 to for the Hunters. Now for a quick post-match analysis, brought to you by Kins Lager Brewing Company in Oak Park, Illinois. Specializing in a unique variety of lagered beers, they are one of the best places to meet up for a game in the Chicago area, thanks to their incredible, high-quality custom table toppers and welcoming environment. I'm not kidding, you have to see these table toppers. I would play every game of Guild Ball on them if I could. Despite the successful result of this game, I'm not certain I'd try the same strategy in the matchup again. 
Minerva was a huge MVP, keeping Theron up tanking Vince's influence and letting me kill an activation to have both first and last activation every turn of the game after the first. However, the low initiative value of Vince's cards and some flubbed rolls on his end at key critical moments did just as much to let Nocturnal Hunting be so effective. He made some mistakes in places as well, but I think the gap in the score was largely due to some luck going my way. If he steals the initiative on turn 2 with Lone Striker, things very well may have ended up just the opposite, as my team collapsed without Theron's output and support. After that turn, I think he needed to, I think Vince needed to realize he wasn't going to win initiative with his cards and spend all his momentum down healing his models up. This may have pulled some models up out of range for my initial activation takeouts, getting him last activation back, and possibly giving him enough to swing the fight back around. Holding on to that momentum seems to have been a waste. For my own part, I needed to recognize just how critical that pinned on Fallow was on turn 1. Hitting that effectively ends the farmer's productivity for the rest of the turn. If she can't get into Theron turn 1, then I can quite possibly play Seize on turn 2 to dodge a nearly full health Theron back out of the scrum, pin her or Grange again, and then jog or sprint off to a side and keep the game spread out and under control. Not bonus timing that roll was a blunder that possibly should have cost me the game. The next time I play this matchup, I expect I'll try a more mobile approach and work harder to avoid forming the scrum the farmers want to set up and are indeed favored in. Thanks for watching, and be sure to watch Vince's new episode of Run, of Run the Length to get his take on the game. Until next time, may your play always be improving.